My favorite thing is a puffy sleeve. I, I don't know why I don't do it every day. Hi, I'm Kristen Stewart, and ready? This is from Twilight One. It rains a lot up there in forks. And so I have glovies and a big fall of hair that's not mine. Wow, he looks weird. This is funny. What else? <laughs> so like Bella, she's just not much of a dress girl, especially in Twilight One. The sweater and the sneakers kind of made it like, what, I'm not I'm barely wearing a dress. I loved that night. It felt like my prom. I was 17 and I was in high school. So yeah, that, it's a visceral memory. Thank you for presenting it to me now. Here's Bella, she's getting married or maybe she's just gotten married. I think you take pictures after the ceremony. It's funny, look at that arch. I'm trying so hard. I'm like, hi, I love that dress so much. I remember getting into it, felt like getting into a real wedding dress because I was like being hidden in some room with like heaters and I was like, it's too hot in here. My makeup's melting off. And they're like, well, we're not gonna be ready for 30 minutes. And I was like, but I'm ready now. I was like, well, here we go. That's, um, this is the time that I can play the bride. It was, it's a nice memory and he looks great. Yeah, I think if I were to ever do like a classic wedding dress, this is kind of the one, this is the picture. I'm not gonna do it, but I got to do it. And I do really, I appreciate that. So this is a photograph of myself and Jodie Foster in the panic room. And I've recently watched this movie, it's really good. I wore the same pajamas for eight months. I turned 11 years old on this movie. I got my period on this movie. <laughs> my pajamas were red. That was a prescient choice. The clothes were great. She's so kind of like austere and like sad, but clearly gonna get her like groove and power and mojo back. And the kids like, you can curse and you can drink Coca-Cola and have pizza and be happy. I have very fond memories of that tiny little cell. We were in it for eight months wearing the same clothes. Just to speak to the clothes, cause that's what I'm supposed to do. I mean, they are like really defining and perfect for these two ladies. I watched it recently and I was like, there's something distinct going on here. And it might, it might be hard to put your finger on, but I just was like, oh, I know who these, who these people are. Michael Kaplan designed this one. He is also a legend. Well done. This is from Adventureland. I was such a little derpy derpiston. I could barely wear my own skin, let alone these clothes. I loved making this movie so much. I still have my Games, Games, Games shirt. So fun. I mean, the 80s and the 90s, they're back in full force and the early 2000s. Yeah, this was so fun wearing a t-shirt in the pool. That's such a distinct era of time where you're wearing t-shirts into pools where you're not just removing the item, wearing a bathing suit. Somehow this was the sexy option. This was, he's really gonna like me in this sopping wet black t-shirt. <laughs> Here we are in Spencer in the wedding dress. This was shot on a Saturday. We shot five day weeks and I was really unprepared for like the 12 hour day that we did of every single costume in the whole movie, traipsing over every inch of exterior grounds. I could barely breathe, it was so cold and I was so nervous to hold that dress up with my body. It made me so emotional. It actually is quite different to the one that she wore because it looked different on me and we couldn't have the whole big train thing and somehow it got closer than the truth. A really good designer knows how to dress the human being and, and not lose sight of that human being while telling a greater story. This was so fun. This is when I got to play Joan Jett in The Runaways. Um, but me and Dakota, uh, who played Sheree Curry, got to play around and take all these photos before we started shooting because we know them in images more than we do footage. She's just one of the most intrinsically herself motherfuckers it's ever been. And clothes mattered, fit mattered. My body's different. I'm looking at this going, God, you could have done better. I look at this and I'm like, well, I need an hour to discuss uh, the memory flood and the sort of like negotiation between things that you're proud of and things that you could have done better. And then also just sort of letting it be what it was. And I was so young and I love, Joan so much and I hope she's great and hi, what's up if you see this? Snow White and the Huntsman was the physical feat. The armor made me so physically incapable. <laughs> it was really fun to, to put this stuff together. Colleen Atwood is a genius, beautiful designer. The clothes evolved in this really cool way that on big movies usually they're not allowed to degrade and like, it feels kind of stuffy or even when you do make a choice to like rip the dress off at the bottom, it feels like there's a little tear already and ready to break away. Like her her clothes are lived in, really substantiated the idea that I was playing the please cut this out fairest of them all. Yeah, I just had the best time. The sword, the shield is so cool. Everything was really tight and like 
all of the imagery with the tree and sort of like, you know, who she was, who this girl actually was as a human being kind of hopefully came through in the clothes and didn't feel like worn territory, like sort of like revitalizing something that we all already loved. Okay, yeah, so Personal Shopper was all about the clothes too and about it being not about the clothes in this weird, conflicted way. I was playing someone in such deep grief and like having such an existential spiral into an identity crisis. So the clothes being something that she could put on and find stimulus through or kind of even like a little bit of like feeling like she might be alive and not dead through uh, was, was fun. I, I couldn't see how beautiful everything was until I watched the movie. Um, and when I watched it, I was like, oh man, you guys are really up to something. So this is from Seberg. I've worked with Michael Wilkinson a few times. He did some of the last, I think he did the last two Twilight movies. I was so nervous to play this part. She has an elegance and a sort of poise. While being quite radical and wild and cool and hot, she was required to be such a lady then. She's someone that I've coveted as an actress and kind of just an icon for a long time. So him putting me in the right clothes, it gave me the confidence to inhabit space on that set. I miss you, Michael. You're great at what you do. Thank you for making me better in this movie where I played Gene Seberg. This is Love Lies Bleeding. Olga Mills is the costume designer for this, and she is somebody that I want to steal and keep in my proverbial pocket. She's an incredible costumer. She understands texture and tone and intonation and everything that everything implies without having to be super exact. Like you can tell her a feeling and she gives you the right pair of jeans. We figured out that I was, my character was definitely a, a soft shoed person. She came in with a lot of boot ideas and belts and like leather. And I was like, I think she's a bit of a nice guy. She was like, oh, soft shoe. I was like, yeah, I think that's what I mean. <laughs> like, choosing the right jeans, you know, it's like so much more than that.